Assalamu alaikum and adab dear students. Today's lecture is regarding the welded connections in steel structures. So in this topic we will study what welded connections is all about, how the members are to be connected through these welded junctions and how the strength of these welded joints or connections are to be evaluated. So first of all we begin with the process of welding. Basically this welding process involves connecting of two structural members together in which some heat is applied to the members where they are to be connected and then mechanical pressure may be applied in most of the cases and then the fusion is created in between the members which are to be connected at these ends. So this is when they cool down the metals both the metals get fused into each other and hence a joint is formed. So first let's go to the welding processes how this welding is done. There are various processes involved. One is gas welding. This gas welding in which oxyacetylene gas flame is used to heat the members the ends of the members and a filler material a filler metal is used which melts and fills up the gap between the two plates or the two members and which solidifies on cooling and hence a joint is formed. Forge welding in which the parts to be welded are heated to a temperature where they get into the molten state. Then fusion takes place and mechanical pressure may be applied at that particular point of time. Electric welding in this high electric currents are passed through the members. The members offer resistance to this electric current due to which heat gets generated Again, mechanical pressure is applied and the joint is developed. Thermit. Thermit is a mixture of iron oxide and aluminium which is heated, melted and then poured at the joint. The mold is created at the ends, at the edges where the members are to be connected and this thermit is poured which solidifies on cooling. Then we have electric arc welding which is the most common type of welding in which an electric arc is struck at the junction where the members are to be connected the electrode melts down which fills the gap and the members are connected to each other so this is the process of welding how we do this process the welding of the two or more members to connect them such that they form one unit and behave as a homogeneous member then let's see what are the types Types of welded joints or welded connections. So as well the types in the riveted connections here also we are going to have certain types. There are two basic types. One is called the fillet weld. This is the fillet weld and another one is the butt weld. So either the members are to be connected using a fillet weld or we may use a butt weld to connect the members together. So let's study fillet weld first. In a fillet weld, the members are lapped to each other. If this is one of the plates, it is to be welded to some other plate. They will be overlapped to each other. Then welding is done at these edges. This is where the, weld is, where the welds are provided. This is called a fillet weld. Okay. Or else members may be like this. Members to be connected are at right angle to each other and the welding is done here. This is the weld. This is the fillet weld. Okay. So the members in a fillet weld are to be overlapped then the welding is to be done as per our required norms as per the requirement of that particular joint. Now this weld formed over here this is this dimension is called the size of weld. This is known as the size of weld. 
So this is S, this is also S, it forms an isosceles triangle sort of a thing. But the thickness of this belt, when we evaluate the strength, we need the thickness, the average thickness of this particular belt that is taken as this dimension. So for evaluation of the strength, we calculate throat thickness. This is called throat thickness. We don't take into account the size itself. We take the average thickness of the weld that is called the throat thickness. Technically, we use throat thickness term to calculate the strength of that particular joint. This throat thickness for a fillet weld is 0 0.707 times the size of weld. So size of the weld reduced to 0 0.707 uh, uh, times and that will be the throat thickness of that particular weld when we evaluate its strength. What is the size? Size is to be taken by the designer depending upon the thickness of the plates. Normally, we have minimum and maximum limitations. The minimum size for a fillet weld depends upon the thickness of the members which are to be connected. So if thickness of the members will vary, the size will also vary. Thick less the thickness, lesser will be the size. More the thickness of the members, more will be the size of the weld. So if thickness is around, say if it is uh, up to 10 mm. We may use a size of 3 mm. For the design, we may use a size of 3 mm. If it is exceeding 10, up to 20, we may go for a size of 5 mm. If it is exceeding 20, up to 30, we may use 6 mm. If it is exceeding 30, 50, up to 50, we may use 10 mm size of the belt. So this is the minimum requirement. Minimum, this size has to be followed when we go for the design of that particular fillet weld. But there is a maximum limitation also, maximum size. Maximum size shall be thickness of the member minus 1.5. So our limitation is T minus 1.5. Minimum is this range. In between, we choose a size, calculate its average throat thickness, that is 0 0.707 times the size, and then proceed with the design of this fillet weld. This is one of the welds. Then second is a butt weld. Butt weld, as the name specifies here, in similar to that riveted connection, here also the members are not overlapped. The members are kept face to face with certain gap in between. These are the two members to be connected. And Welding is done at the edges that is here. Now depending upon these edges, whether they are modified, whether they are chamfered, whether they are given a particular shape to increase this area of the filler material, mm -hmm. so that depends, that will specify the type of that particular butt weld. If it is simply like this, there is no chamfering in the edges of the plate, the welding is done over here, this is known as a square butt weld. This is called a square butt weld. But if we change the shape a bit at the edges, that is, if this was the member which we were used, which we were connecting or welding to another member, if we chamfer these plates here, edges, say something like this, we will get more area for the filler material to get deposited in the particular gap in between the members and form a more solid joint. So this joint, this weld will be something like this. It will appear to be like this. This is called a single V butt weld. Depending upon the shape of the edges, what we have changed it into, what we have chamfered it, this will be a single V butt weld. Similarly, if the shape is of the letter U, it will be a single U butt weld. It will be known as single U butt weld or it may be a single V butt weld. So depending upon the shape, we classify it as single U, V or it may be a B weld joint. Say this is the member, this is the connecting member. If we change its shape, we somehow modify it like this. and then provide the filler material. Here we weld it. 
this is called single bevel but when so depending upon the shape we classify it as single u v j or b -bell. but we may change this more shape to a different one also we may provide even more space for the mortal molten material or the filler material to get deposited say for example this was the member this was one of the plates another plate was something like this if we modify it something like this now we provide more space for the filler material to get deposited and more the strength of the joint so this will be the welding part such type of weld is now called a double v butt weld or it may be a double u butt weld or it may be a double j butt weld so depending upon the changes in its shape at the edges where we are welding the members together it may be double u v or j or if it is bevel type if we modify the shape like this and then provide a weld over here this will be known as a double bevel butt weld So this is how we classify the butt welds. Now depending upon whether it is a single type or a double type of a butt weld, we name it as, we classify this butt weld as full penetration butt welds or half or incomplete incomplete penetration butt welds so a butt weld may be a complete penetration or full penetration butt weld or it may be a half or incomplete penetration butt weld now for full penetration all these double types double v double u double j double b weld this will come under this category of full penetration butt weld or complete penetration butt weld then half or incomplete it will all sing be including this single u single v single j single b weld this will be categorized as half or incomplete penetration butt welds now what is the difference difference is in the throat thickness throat thickness for this full penetration butt weld shall be taken as the thickness full thickness of the plate that is the lower plate if we have two plates of different thicknesses the plate with a lower thickness will be taken equal to the throat thickness for the analysis of that particular weld or if it is an incomplete penetration butt weld then throat thickness is taken as a reduced value then it is 5 by 8 times the thickness of the thinner plate thinner plate so it's 5 by 8 times the thickness of thinner plate for half complete and full for the complete penetration butt weld so this is the type of the butt weld what we are we can use for connecting the members together then we come to the strength part of it that is load carrying capacity load bearing capacity or strength of a welded connection or a welded joint how much load a welded connection can ultimately carry this safe load is equal to some area and some stress load is area into stress area will be length into throat thickness this is the area of the weld the length of the weld provided and the average thickness that is that we call throat thickness of the weld multiplied by the permissible stress in the weld okay this is the load that particular weld or the strength that particular weld will at the most carry. Out of this, throat thickness we know, this is the throat thickness. Depending upon the type of fillet weld, it will be, it will be 0.707 times the size. 
or if it is the butt weld then depending upon again the type of butt weld it will be complete penetration it will be equal to t if it is incomplete it will be 5 by t uh, 5 by 8 times t permissible stress in the well this is the permissible stress in the well normally if it is a fillet well we take it equal to 110 newton per mm square if it is a butt well we take it equal to 142 newton per mm square or the given condition l is the effective length L is the effective length of weld. How much length we are providing, that is the effective length of weld. So this is the load that a weld can carry. Normally, we, desire, we have designed the member. That load, for a particular load, we already designed the member. We designed the joint for the same load. So load we know, we calculate this length and then provide the length so that full this effective length is fully provided so that our load carrying capacity becomes equal to the load carrying capacity of the member. See some typical cases, if we have this load carrying capacity as L into throat thickness into sigma W, out of which we calculate this value L. Now how we are going to provide it? Say we have a plate which is connected to some other plate through a fillet weld so this is another plate okay this is another plate if we have to weld it we have any options we can depending upon the value l we may weld it here and here only so we may weld it along two lengths only but that time here has to be taken that this length the length which we are providing say this is l1 this l1 shall not be less than the transverse distance say this is b of the width of the plate this l1 cannot be less than the width of the plate or the transverse distance between the two ends okay and this l this transverse distance between this l l1 here same distance here l1 again here these two lengths they are separated by a distance b the transverse distance between the two length, uh, weld welded lengths shall not exceed shall not be less than 16 times the thickness of the plate which we are welding so we, this is the case when we use only two lengths if we have to provide more length and the overlap has to be limited because this is the overlap This is the overlap. This overlap has to be limited for economy. If this overlap is to be limited, we have to provide this length. We were not able to provide it along two lengths only. We can provide it here also. We may provide it here also. So the third length is also welded. In case length is even more, overlap is limited. We may weld the fourth edge also. So depending upon the length to be provided, the main thing to be considered is the CG. The length which we are providing, the length of the weld which we are providing, the CG of the weld and the CG of the member, these should coincide with each other. This is important. So we distribute the weld equally above and below this axis. This is a symmetrical mem member, so there was no problem as such. But in certain cases, the member is unsymmetrical and the problem arises. Say in case we have another symmetrical member where we have this is a gusset member, the gusset plate, we have an angle section, we have another angle section. So these are two angles which are connected to the same side of the gusset plate. Okay. If I show it in elevation, this is one of the angles. This is another angle. These are provided connecting to be connected to a gusset plate. So length of weld I know this is the CG of the member. If you happen to see the CG, the CG about the CG, the member is symmetrical now when we have joined two angle sections together. 
So first of all, I provide a welded length of welding somewhere here. If more welded length is required to be provided, we'll equally distribute it at these two edges. So again, there is no problem as such. We can ev uh, evenly distribute it. But when there is a single angle section, if the angle section is a single angle now, length of the weld is to be provided. Say this is our gusset plate. Angle connected to this gusset plate is only one or maybe two angles on each side of the gusset plate. So in this case or there are double angle sections for this particular member like this. If this is the CG, okay, this is XX axis. The section is unsymmetrical about this XX axis. If I show it in elevation, one angle section will be visible at a time. This is the angle section. Provide a cassette plate here to be connected to this cassette plate. This is ISA. This is the cassette plate. This is a CG of the section at distance CXX. Okay. Now, if this length we have calculated, how much length we are to be going to be provide, going to provide for this meeting the load criteria. Now, this length is to be distributed. I have three phases available for one angle. I have three phases available. The total length is to be distributed for this particular angle and this particular angle. Whatever length for full load, if I have calculated, I will divide that length into two parts, one on each face of the gusset plate. Now, I have calculated on one face how much length I have to provide. So first I will provide it here. The concept is CG of the length of weld provided must coincide with the CG of the member. Okay. So now I cannot provide same length of weld over here as well as here. It cannot be provided now because the CG will shift to the center then. Okay. Now this is the size length. This size I know. This is the leg say L1 size of this ISA. So this L1 length we are knowing. This length we denote by X say this is Y. So X and Y cannot be same. We have L total length is equal to L1 plus X plus Y. So out of this, we have x plus y some value. But x and y are two variables. Now we have to reduce it. We have to eliminate one variable so that we can get the value of this x and y. How we do it? We convert it into force. Say this is force P1 because of the length x at the CG. Then for L1, CG is this. This is the force P2. For Y length, this is the force P3 at its CG. Okay. I take some points, say here, point A. I take moments. Moments at A. If we take moment at A, this is our force which is acting at CXX. So we'll have force into CXX. This will be one moment in a clockwise direction. Then there will be anti-clockwise moments. This P3 will not create any moment because we are taking moments at A. It has got no distance from A. So this moment will go zero. Then we have moment due to P1 and P2 only. So P1 into this distance is L1. It will create moment due to L1. Plus P2 and its CG distance from the point A is half of L1. Out of this this P is known to us, CXX is known to us, P2, we can calculate P2 also, P2 is length of the weld 
throat thickness sigma w length of the well this is l1 so we know this p2 also l1 we know now we are left out with this p1 into l1 l1 again we know p1 p1 length we don't know because that is x multiplied with throat thickness and sigma w so the only variable is x so solving this equation we will get the value of x from this particular equation we will get the value of y and this x and y are not going to be same they are going to be different so that the cg of this entire welded length will coincide with the cg of the member itself so in welded connections we have a single formula for calculating its strength load we know because the load of for which we are going to design the welded connection is the same as we have designed the member so we have to provide this thread thickness this will depend upon the type permissible stress we know length of the weld is to be distributed now distribution depends upon the number of sides how many sides we are going to weld what is the provision is there any lap length which is to be limited or it's our choice we will make it minimum so that it, uh, it uh, economy is achieved we have to see if the member is symmetrical then the length is to be evenly distributed above and below the x axis and if it is not symmetrical if it is unsymmetrical then this procedure has to be followed for distribution of the length of weld thank you